sex, what it is as a um, phenomenon, and speak about issues towards interventions. Now, I've been lucky enough, as I mentioned before, to partner with um, a lot of organizations, particularly in Southeast Asia, which you know have allowed, has allowed me to have an insight into uh, how chemsex interventions work and holistic chemsex interventions. Now, I mentioned a little bit before about Mainline's work, uh, and Mainline also do uh, research and assessments around uh, drug use and around chemsex and intravenous uh, drug use. And here are uh, just the, the front pages of our, our, um, our reports. Uh, and I will send this to all of our participants once I get your names from Ari. We also run, uh, oh, just a little bit before, we also run uh, a, a website called Chemsex.0. Um, and this offers advice, uh, uh, acute care, and articles for people who uh, who participate in chemsex in the Netherlands um, as a first a, a sort of first help. And this was developed by my colleague uh, Leon Knoops, who some of you on this call might uh, know. So before we jump into our our session today, just a little bit of housekeeping as Ari mentioned before. So uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the time we, I will be presenting on, uh, on what chemsex is, um, uh, my uh, experiences around chemsex and also my experiences of implementing chemsex interventions. Uh, I will ask you at times for uh, your contribution and your contributions are so, so valuable. So please uh, be ready for me to ask you some, sometimes for your contributions. And this is a really safe space with no judgment. So anybody's opinions, experiences, uh, uh, everyone's invited to share. Now, when I'm presenting, I will ask for all cameras uh, to be turned off unless you are speaking. If you want to speak, if you're going to speak, please, if you could turn your cameras on so we can see who is speaking. And we will have some discussion time at the end and some time for questions and answers. And then we can all turn our cameras off and I will stop the screen share so we can see one another. In the meantime, please take some time to uh, just check what your uh, Zoom name is right now. And if you can, please add, um, your uh, your gender designations uh, that will be really uh, good for for us so I can refer to you uh, properly uh, and please make sure that your names are in English so if we if we're going to be talking to you uh, we can say your name and hey so sometimes when I am speaking uh, in, during the presentation there might be times where you want to really ask a burning question that is absolutely fine now I would love for that to happen please just raise your hand. Uh, in, in the Zoom, and I will stop and give the floor to you. Remember to take your mic off mute uh, as you are speaking, and please keep your mics on mute uh, as the presentation is uh, going on. So uh, a little bit of housekeeping and a little bit of introductions about myself. Now, uh, because we have so many people on the call, I didn't think it was practical to go around to everybody to ask uh, where you, uh, what you do, and just to introduce yourself, but just a small uh, introduction, just to know uh, where you are joining us from today. I know I have some friends uh, that I have seen before um, that are joining uh, today, so if you could let us know where you are joining from. So for this task, you will need your mobile, and what you will do is you will scan the QR code, and if you scan this QR code, uh, you will get the question uh, on your phone and you can answer immediately. So where are you joining us from today? Wow, and I already see such a diverse audience we have here. Everyone from Europe, I think, uh, at the moment. I'm curious to see whether uh, we have a wider audience than this. Oh, this is incredible. Wow, wow, wow. Aha, there we go, India. Beautiful. Oh, all the way from Ireland. Great. Finland. Portugal. I see Athens there on the side. Oh, fantastic. Switzerland. Hungary. 
Malaysia, I see. Uh, uh, we have we have somebody from uh, Montreal, all the way over in Canada. Great, fantastic. Cork, Myanmar, wonderful, and the list all grows. Wow, wow, wow! So we have a huge uh, uh, spread of people, and I'd just like to say. Um, yeah, 38 responses, but I think we even have more people today. Welcome to everybody. Ah, Brazil. Wow. Beautiful. Uh, thank you to everybody for joining and welcome to our workshop today on Chemsex from issues to interventions. Now, this is not going to be the last time that I ask you to uh, 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 use this mentee. So please keep the window open on your phone. And when it's time, you will see that the questions have changed just to warm you up a little bit. Well, welcome everybody. And what are we going to be discussing in the two hours or so that we have today? Well, first and foremost, uh, we're going to start to uh, put chemsex into our own context. It's important for us to know and to share what chemsex means to us and the people with whom, uh, the people who participate in chemsex in our particular contexts. Um, what is the history of chemsex and how might we start to dis dissect the classic definition? So we would already have started to put chemsex into our own context. What is the classic definition of chemsex and how does that change and how has it developed over the years in the context that we come from? Uh, we will discuss uh, the substances that are used within chemsex and um, the added value of chemsex, what chemsex can bring uh, to people who engage in chemsex. You know, it's um, as in, in the harm reduction world, it's very common for us to always focus specifically on, on, the, um, on the issues. But what does chemsex do for the people who participate in it? And uh, we will then look at, well, indeed, when chemsex becomes problematic, um, and issues that can arise and how we categorize those problems to be able to offer effective and impactful interventions. And speaking of interventions, I'll finish on, on, uh, on a case study of how I partnered along with Mainline and uh, the local organization in Vietnam to apply impactful holistic interventions in Hanoi. Um, so let's begin without further ado, and let's talk about chemsex and what chemsex means to us. So we are able uh, to get all of our noses into alignment. So again, I'm going to ask uh, you to just pick up your phones and answer the following question, another word cloud for us. And I'll take a little bit longer with this one. So I, I, we saw that we had uh, people joining from all across Europe and some, some beautiful uh, destinations, Montreal, uh, uh, Brazil, uh, Myanmar. And for you, what are the main, let's say, two substances that are used for chemsex in your context? Now, you might not, uh, you, that it could be that um, you are not uh, somebody who offers, say, interventions for, for chemsex, but anything that you have heard about chemsex, about the substances, then you can also uh, at these. And I'm seeing some answers coming through already. Thank you for your answers. I'm seeing uh, Crystal Meth, yeah, Tina. Um, I've seen a lot of GHB, GBL, amphetamines. And somebody chose uh, stimulants, just stimulants as a broad uh, category of substances. I'm seeing some examples of the caffeinones coming through. 3 MMC, 3 and 4 MMC. Um, and I'm seeing uh, um, erection stimulants, so uh, Viagra uh, coming through as well. Um, yeah, MCAT, so also MCAT, that person must be from the UK. Uh, I think that's the, that's the, the nickname for it in the UK. Um, cocaine, I see. Uh, I see a couple of times cocaine. I see crack cocaine as well. Again, so a wide range of, of, of substances. I'm also looking at, I also see poppers. More still coming through. 
great. GHB, GBL, yes, great. So we, we're going to uh, talk a lot more about the substances used, what chems are, and is if there is uh, what, what the relationship are with chems and regular drugs, and also the differences. Why are, uh, are substances that are used within chemsex referred to as chems? What are chems? What do they do uh, for the person? How do they, uh, what do they add to the experience of chemsex? Okay, so we've we've started to look at uh, substances that are that are the, the main substances, and I think I think the winner from this one is probably uh, crystal meth, which is no real surprise that that was the main one. Next question, uh, to just to 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 give awareness of, of the context that we're in. Just gonna uh, whoop, that, that one, to be, oh, next. yes. So my next question, and this is really a yes or no answer based on your opinion based on your opinion and, and how you understand chemsex. Uh, from, can people from any gender participate in chemsex? Is it only men who have sex with men? Or is it men who have sex with men, trans people, uh, and a wider range of different genders? Can people from any gender participate in chemsex? Or is it only men who have sex with men? So I'm seeing that yes, uh, that the yes answer is, is is very, very popular. So far, 28 people. Some people have also uh, voted for no. When we get to that point in our presentation, I'll be very interested to have a discussion on that and uh, to be able to dig a little bit more into the history of the phenomenon of chemsex as well. How was that history? How was that word coined? What did it mean? in the early 2000s when it was coined and how has it developed over time? And as the word has spread from the United Kingdom uh, across the world. Okay, great. So next question, two, two more questions, everyone. And the next one is, what about we, so we've spoken about, um, we've spoken about gender, how about diverse sexual orientations. So here we're talking about, you know, is it the LGBT community or do, can heterosexual people also uh, uh, participate and experience chemsex? What is, what is it, what, what is it in your, what is your answer for you from your opinion, from your understanding and from your context? Okay. The question will be on your phones now. Okay, so the, again, overwhelmingly, um, overwhelmingly on the yes answer that people from diverse sexual orientations can and do experience chemsex um, as well. Again, we, we, we have the opportunity uh, to dive a little bit deeper into that within this presentation and to discuss uh, that during this workshop as well. And finally, I'm just introducing you as a little teaser to the, some of the things that are coming up within this uh, presentation. The final teaser is the final question. In your opinion, is chemsex fundamentally problematic? Is chemsex always fundamentally problematic? Some answers are coming in. So again, overwhelmingly, uh, our participants today, you all voted no, chemsex is not fundamentally uh, problematic. 
and that's true, of course. And and um, as I mentioned before, it's 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 it's, it's almost what well, it used to be almost the norm to to refer to uh, uh, chemsex as as a, a fundamental problem, uh, and and that ranges, you know, for, from from the, the culture of particular uh, countries or actually the fact that chemsex needs to be presented as a problem for, for funding applications, for donor applications, yeah, uh, for example. But actually, when speaking to people, no, uh, chemsex is not fundamentally problematic. And indeed, it does provide uh, a very big added value, a large added value for some of the people who uh, participate in it. So thank you, everyone, for your, uh, for your um, contributions so far. Um, and I will uh, continue now with speaking a little bit about uh, the uh, history of um, chemsex. Now, first, we are we are talking about about this 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 term chemsex, but something uh, something in I am seeing answers chats coming in. There. I'm just going to refer to the chat box. Oh, everyone introducing themselves. Great. Um, chemsex. This is something that is used, a term that is used by harm reductionists across the world. But I don't think I've very regularly heard people who participate in chemsex calling what they do, that phenomenon, chemsex. So what is chemsex called? Again, so many people in, 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 in different contexts. What do people call chemsex? in your context? What are some of the slang words for it? Um, and if you could, please add to the uh, to the chat box. And I see uh, one answer's come in already from Maxi. thank you so much, uh, PNP, an acronym for party and play, I believe. Uh, yeah, party uh, with the capital T, uh, referring to Tina, uh, the slang word for, uh, for crystal meth. Uh, Arian says uh, that uh, uh, in, in Malta, it's called chill. Uh, and uh, Jordi says session, uh, which sounds great. And Juara chill, does that say that? Very chill? Ah, all sounds, sounds great. I'm assuming that's uh, Spanish. Um, so a large range of words um, uh, for, for those friends that are here from Canada, those friends that are here uh, from uh, from Asia, it might not be a surprise for, for you to hear that chemsex is sometimes referred to as high fun in uh, those uh, areas. Uh, PMP, we've already had. Uh, sexo additivado, divado. Uh, you're just challenging me now. Hi, Karen. Nice that you're here. Um, but yes, chemsex is very rarely known as the word chemsex among the people who participate in it. However, in London, uh, chemsex as a as a phrase was first coined in around the early 2000s by some of the, 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 the chemsex he uh, heavyweights, uh, David Stewart, Adam Bourne, uh, etc. And was, uh, thank you, Annalisa, um, and was, was, was coined as a response to um, uh, a, a lot of the, the response to people using a lot of crystal methamphetamine, a lot of caffeinones, and a lot of GHB uh, in that region. Now, um, the word, of course, has spread and has since that moment and has developed. But the classic definition at that point was what I'm going to put on the board now. So the use of specific drugs used specifically for sex by gay and other men who have sex with men. So this is the classic definition that, that, that was uh, coined in, let's say, the, the, the early 2000s around London. And let's, let's break this down in terms of uh, the definition here, you know, it's quite a lot going on in that definition, and let's break that down. So, first of all, the use of specific substances, and what were those specific substances? 
Well, they, they were some requisites. I already mentioned uh, methamphetamine, Tina. I, I mentioned cathinones such as MCAT. Um, and I already mentioned GHB and GBL. What do those substances have in common? Well, they are all highly psychoactive, meaning that um, there, there, is, there is not a constant need to redose. If redosing is, is, is uh, constant redosing is necessary, then it, that does not provide the, envi the environment for long-term sex, uh, uh, which is what chemsex is, of course. And of course, facilit facilitation of long-term sex and the loss of inhibitions. The ability to have sex and to try and to explore with different people and different kinks without feeling shame, without feeling guilt at that moment. And of course, these specific some combinations, these specific substances are combined or were combined uh, uh, regularly. So the specific intention, so the next part of that definition, the specific intention. Um, chemsex being different to going out to a club or going out to a bar, using some cocaine, meeting somebody nice, and then going home with that person. The idea around chemsex is that people would procure those drugs before the night out or before to go to a party, knowing that other people would have procured those uh, drugs as well. Um, the specific intention in, in, in the Netherlands with our research with Mainline, we find we found that this is, is, is kind of is, is different to going out with some cocaine to a club because the specific intention would, would, be, would lead much more likely lead to issues such as dependence, uh, for example, as well as losing control and men the mental health issues that can arise as we're going to discuss shortly. Now, by gay and other men who have sex with men. Now, I asked you before in the in the Menti discussion, we discussed, we had a discussion through the Menti discussion, um, speaking about uh, sexual orientation and around uh, gender and why uh, this first definition uh, included by gay and other men who have sex with men. And we can discuss the broader uh, uh, definition how that uh, uh, this, how this term has developed in a, a short while, but at that time, in the early two uh, thousands, chemsex was really seen as a result of cultural factors, and particularly these cultural factors that manifested themselves as homophobic and open open disgust of homosexuality so you see in my in my list here that cultural and religious attitudes to homosexuality gay sex being uh, taboo and being forced uh, underground societal uh, attitudes to homosexuality as well as the trauma and the stigma of the aids epidemic Remember, towards the end of the the the, the eighties, the, the 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 AIDS epidemic had, was still significant, and the trauma and the stigma of this also forced gay sex uh, underground. And around the time of the early two thousands, we were seeing the birth of MySpace. We were seeing the birth of Facebook, but we were also seeing the birth of Hookup X. Uh, apps based around gay sex and hookups, such as Grinder, such as Planet Romeo. And this gave rise to a whole different culture. And particularly in this culture, these particular things were cultures such as gay tribes, which gave rise in, in, in part to a gay specific rejection culture born of those hookup apps. Meaning, on on Grinder, for example, it is so easy to op to talk to someone. There is no um, uh, there, there is no friend request or follow request 
you talk to anybody you want, which made people very, very specific about who they wanted to speak to and who they wanted to, uh, to, to, to have sex with. This in turn led to this culture of rejection. No old ones, uh, uh, nobody overweight, nobody of a certain, of a certain culture, and, uh, and nobody of a certain creed, nobody of a certain religion. And this rejection culture also made people, you know, quite scared uh, and, 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 and band together, forced that, uh, forced gay sex also further underground through fear of stigma, through fear of rejection. People who started to fear their bodies, to fear who they are, started to feel more confident or realize that they would feel more confident with uh, the, the use of uh, substances. And the concept of risk and danger associated with uh, gay sex. Um, what we still see in the Netherlands is um, the, uh, the popularity of so-called uh, pos parties, where people would, will join a chemsex uh, gathering and uh, knowing full well that other people are, are may well be HIV positive within that party. And the idea being, well, I participate in chemsex anyway. Uh, I, I, I am part of this community. I'm just gonna do it because it's, 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 such, a, uh, it's such a risk, but it's, it's probably the case that I'm going to contract it anyway, sooner or later. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it anyway, why not? Uh, and, and just uh, get rid of the, of the, of the uh, you know, the, the risk factors, uh, so to speak. So these reasons were why the initial uh, definition was based around gay and men who have sex with men. However, this definition was always, just like any other definition, was always going to develop, and it has developed. And here are, here are main, main lines uh, uh, definition now that we use now, a, a, a specific intention to use a combination of specific substances in a sexual setting by men who have sex with men and trans people. Now that is a very Dutch based um, um, uh, definition. Why is that? Well, sex in, in the Netherlands is, is very open. The taboo of sex is 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 uh, it, it doesn't doesn't exist, but homosexuality does. So the the phenomenon still concentrates generally around people uh, who men who have sex with men and trans people. But that has developed so much internationally, and for example, in places with 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 uh, whom I've collaborated and partners who have who have collaborated across Southeast Asia, for example, use very 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 different definitions. Um, and I think it's also important to, to not own uh, an exclusivity on the term, but to be, uh, to be, to be broad and to be um, uh, curious about uh, the, the context of other, um, of, of other places. Certainly in my international work, as I mentioned, uh, the countries in Southeast Asia do often use a completely uh, different uh, um, definition. And as Charlie mentioned uh, before, speaking about the, 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 the difference between uh, sexualized uh, drug use and, uh, and chemsex, it's, it's, it is at this point very important for me to talk about this and to say that it is important for us not to conflate the two. Chemsex and sexualized substance use are two, uh, are two different things, chemsex falling under the, 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 the umbrella of sexualized substance use, uh, sub sexualized substance use being quite uh, general. And but the differences in what we see in chemsex uh, as opposed to um, uh, other, uh, other uh, areas of, of sexualized substance use such as uh, club dark rooms or uh, cruising sites or uh, random sexual encounters is that Chemsex often has the the you has the following um, kind of ideas associated with it. Um, chemsex is often 
in the in the in the context that we have seen it in mainline, it's often quite long term, lasting for hours or for days. Because of the taboo and criminalization in some contexts of homosexuality, but mostly because of the criminalization uh, of uh, of drug use, chemsex is often hidden and quite taboo. Hidden meaning uh, that there are it is difficult to gain access. There are codes uh, that are used through slang words, through how people are uh, uh, participants are invited. Uh, through networking, through snowballing, and somebody who knows another person, but but going to, uh, for example, a sex club to uh, to have chem sex is generally not going to happen. Now, the substance use uh, with within chem sex, very interestingly, is often ritualistic, so people often have their specific ways and means and substances that they like to use at specific times and specific moments. Ritualistic also uh, being that often uh, in, in, the, in the, the, the service users that, that, that come to Mainline, um, and we speak about this, I'll speak about this a little bit later, people have become so ingrained into that ritual that they are unable to have sex in any other way apart from with their, uh, their ritual. Chemsex ritual. Themes of themes of boundaries and control. As I mentioned before already, um, the, the chemsex substances, the chems, are often disinhibiting, meaning that you do things that you would not necessarily do. You might cross your boundaries or other boundaries uh, that you might not uh, uh, cross. And there are usually, uh, there, there are often these themes as well. I already mentioned the aversion to, to vanilla sex. In the Netherlands and, 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 and across the world, we see in our work, we see that people who participate from, from chemsex often experience a vacuum from their regular lifestyle. A chemse chemsex is often a, a community. You'll see the same people or similar people or people that you recognize and because of because of its uh, because it can take hours or days, and the recovery time can be so long because substances are being used for such a long time, that can result in a bit of a vacuum from a regular lifestyle. And because of uh, uh, internalized homophobia, for example, there are often themes uh, in our interviews for people who participate in chemsex around guilt and shame about their substance use, their actions, uh, and, and the sex that they had, okay? So a bit of a difference indeed from general sexualized drug use and the themes that are common, that arise commonly around chemsex. So we've spoken a little bit about the chemsex substances so far? And that was one of my first questions. I asked you what type of substances would uh, are, 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 are most commonly used as chems in your context? And mainly uh, we had a lot of GHB, GBL. We had a lot of um, uh, methamphetamine and we had a lot of cathinones as well, 3NMC, 4NMC and so on. So generally, in terms of the chemsex substances, I already mentioned, they need to fall into three separate brackets. First, be quite psychoactive, because otherwise you need to redose all the time, and that does not uh, contribute to a good sexual experience. Uh, facilitate uh, long-term sex. And to lead to, to have loss of inhibition, so, so, so you do more than you would usually do. So for the substances that, that uh, arose, methamphetamine, tina, um, cathinones, GHB, they all fall under those brackets. My question to you is which substances out there for you 
would not fall under the category of chem. So this is going to be our last uh, Menti slide today. Which would not fall under the category of chems for you? Now, before I start this, it's important for me to say that I'm not saying that not all, the, I'm sure a wide amount of drugs are used within the chem sets context, but which do not fall under those uh, three separate um, categories. Please, on your phones for the last time, now. So I'm seeing some answers coming in. Um, I see uh, opioids uh, coming in, great. I see poppers, I see psychedelics and uh, including uh, mushrooms. Uh, I see uh, THCs, cannabis, joints, caffeine, LSD, okay, and the nitrous oxide, cancer. Great. So while answers continue to, to come in, I will speak about some uh, of these uh, substances. And uh, if you would like to share for somebody who, uh, somebody said uh, opioids, and uh, there's another person who I think just put in opiates as well. Um, yes, indeed, opiates and opioids might be difficult to uh, to have long term sex and also uh, to lose inhibitions. It would be difficult if you're feeling very relaxed uh, and and close to sleep. Um, I see Viagra. Uh, here as well. Yes, Viagra, of course, very synonymous with chemsex, but does not uh, do all of those things. Now, why uh, the 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 why distinguish between the substances that are chems, the substances that will that would do this? Oh, sorry, wrong way. The substances that will do this, and the substances, the other substances. Well. The substances that do this, the ones that are highly psychoactive, facilitate long-term sex and cause the, the loss of its inhibitions, are the ones that are most commonly um, uh, as associated with some of the most common problems that arise within chemsex. So it's important to have uh, uh, interventions that are based around some of those uh, substances as well, and knowing that some of those substances uh, contribute to those problems. Now, all of the all of the the uh, the um, substances that I see that fall that don't fall under the categories of category of chems, apart from the people who put opioids um, and opiates, I've also seen these uh, being used in the context of chemsex. But in the when when forming interventions, these are almost kind of additional substances that don't contribute as much to some of the issues that are seen across uh, among people who participate in chemsex. Um, thank you. And speaking of problems, before we start to speak of problems, it's important for us to just take a moment, uh, I see some answers still coming in, thank you for that, um, about the, the added value of chemsex. Um, and, what we see is we, we say, we, we, I think all of us in the harm reduction uh, um, 
context now are very, very, very well versed on the fact that not all chemsex is problematic. And actually, chemsex can be, for the people who participate in it, very, very, very uh, uh, useful, actually. Um, I have stories, uh, heard many, many stories of, of people enjoying their chemsex because it gives them more energy and focus. The sex is, uh, the sex is incredible. Um, as well as the orgasms that, that, that people have never experienced before. I mentioned already about the self-confidence issue, that the loss of inhibitions and therefore uh, contributing to, uh, to, to, um, to what they do. But I remember a conversation actually uh, when, that I had with somebody in Vietnam when I was, when I was out there partnering with SCDI in terms of uh, uh, um, chemsex uh, interventions. And this participant spoke about the best sex that they had ever had when participating in chemsex. In fact, it was um, um, incredible. But the main problem that that person wanted to, to have support with from the harm reduction organization was uh, the soreness and, and, uh, the, and, the, the, and to have, you know, and, and the soreness of muscles after the, the two or three days of, of um, of chemsex participation. And I remember that outreach worker saying, and it stays with me, it stayed with me. I remember the outreach worker saying to them, well, do you want to make that sex even better? The outreach worker focused with, when, when counseling and offering interventions, not on the problem, but rather on what that person was saying about what, what the value of chemsex was for them. And that was a real moment for me uh, when I thought, wow, what a, what a fantastic way to do, uh, to do the outreach rather than focusing on, uh, uh, you know, uh, this problem or that problem. Saying, no, no, we, what can make this even better for you is if you uh, reduce that muscle soreness. What do you think is giving you the muscle soreness? Oh, well, I, I, he said, I, I, I don't really eat and, and, I, and I, I really go for a long time. Okay, so what do you think that you could do to reduce that muscle soreness? Ah, okay, maybe I can have to take some breaks in the middle of my of, of, of the sex that I have, and and the counselling and 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 the, the outreach worker counselled that uh, participant to an intervention for themselves. They had their own perfect solution. So I really think that, and uh, from in terms of speaking of chemsex um, as as only problematic or very very valuable. You know, we speak about it as it is, which is often both, you know, that, that it has a, a huge added value for somebody, but also they often, uh, that person might well be experiencing some problems uh, also. And speaking of problems, yes, uh, chemsex uh, can become problematic. And in Mainline's work, we uh, categorize those problems into three separate categories, into physical health, into sexual health, and into mental health. And I put some small, um, some very small examples below for you. But what do we mean by physical health, sexual health, and mental health? What kinds of examples uh, uh, do we see? Well, starting with physical health, we see problems based around the technique of use, the effects of the chem itself, and the fact that people have experienced um, uh, hard, often hardcore, quite, uh, quite rough sex. And some of the results you can see on the screen now. Mental health. Now, what I've learned over the years with, with applying uh, uh, chemsex interventions, in, in uh, particularly in the Southeast Asian uh, context, is that 
when we when we were when we first started these interventions, we first started to speak about um, depression and anxiety and a large range of kind of mental health disorders. But the mental health issues are, are often way more low level than that. Okay, not necessarily a disorder, but think thinking about poor self images, real guilt and shame feeling rejected by personal networks and peers, feeling lonely and feeling like uh, they, they can't, people can't sh share, chemsex participants can't share what they're going through with, with other people, their family and their friends, feeling like, uh, feeling a lack of self-worth, bad moods and mood swings. So this was also important for us to, when designing these uh, chemsex interventions as well, and finally, the sexual issues. This is what we commonly have seen. I'm just leaving this, the slide up a little bit because there's a lot of information on here. But relying on, on chems to inhibit ejaculation and prolong sex related to relying on chems for, to feel sexually confident. Oh, uh, somebody says that the, they can't see the slides. Uh, I will just stop the share and restart it just in case. Oh, it's back. Okay, good. Uh, just bear with me. Uh, porn binges, uh, feeling guilt and shame for breaking one's own boundaries or breaking another's uh, boundaries, feeling aversion to so-called vanilla regular sex and only wanting the, 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 the kind of more hardcore kinky sex. People reporting, uh, chemsex participants reporting performance anxiety, only thinking that they can perform whilst they are uh, using, for example, crystal methamphetamine or GHB erectile dysfunction, and only feeling arou arousal through chemsex fetish, such as slam porn, for example. So using all of these issues and, and, and seeing all of these issues, um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some of the interventions that we have uh, supported um, Southeast Asian organizations, particularly in Vietnam, to uh, apply to the chemsex uh, phenomenon, which was growing, as well as the, the use of people, uh, more and more people using uh, crystal methamphetamine. So we wanted to, uh, we wanted to uh, em employ and uh, use chemsex interventions that were impactful. But first of all, we really needed to consult with the community to understand what they meant by chemsex interventions that were impactful. What meant, what did that mean for them? So we interviewed uh, the communities of people who use drugs around Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City. And this is what they said. They wanted to create an environment for positive change, for their interventions and the support to be measurable and impactful, and to increase the physical, mental, and social health of service users. Now, this one for me was very, very important to fill the gap for, uh, for and provide a means for primary health care people who did not have access to healthcare, what could we do that was community-based that would be able to plug that gap? Interventions that advocated for a reduction of stigma among, among the, the service users themselves and also in wider society. And also very, very, very fundamental was interventions that were specialized and that could be specialized to match the risk behaviors of particular 
um, service users, as well as their patterns of use. So with this in mind, we then began to develop, um, to, to, to set in course developing uh, these interventions. And it started off in 2018 with a mapping and surveys of ATS use. That developed over the years with needs assessments, uh, intensive trainings, uh, more uh, focus group discussions, more needs assessments, and focused intervention training for community-based organizations so that they would feel comfortable and be able to offer some of the interventions. Uh, train, a trainer, trainer program, as well as development of intervention and counseling packages. And then implementation of two, in 2023. In 2023, we also disseminated the interventions that we did that we uh, that we delivered to uh, the wider Southeast Asia region and community based organizations based across Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia, um, Malaysia and Thailand. So to be able to know what types of interventions were appropriate in our case study in Vietnam, in our intervention package delivery in Vietnam, we first needed to know what situations of drug use were, which issues were most common, which interventions were offered right now and what works with them, what needed to be uh, improved and how those interventions could have a bigger impact. What impact were they having now? What could we do to build uh, a bigger impact and the results of these of this focus group discussions these needs assessment said that we should have interventions that did these things first a more a more focus on holistic counseling beyond reduction of use beyond HIV prevention and beyond SC, SDI pre prevention. At that moment, in, in, within, within those CBOs, the first question was always, have you thought about reducing your use when coming in contact with a client? The clients told us that they wanted to see less of that. They knew about, uh, about condom use. They had access to PrEP. But what about holistic uh, counseling beyond uh, 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 these things. What about the fact that sometimes they 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 experience skin problems, or they had uh, they 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 were losing weight, or uh, they 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 were extreme uh, experiencing extreme come downs. The assessment findings also said, okay, uh, please add more structure to the interventions. That would be really useful. So how to put those interventions into categories? Provisions can also be expanded and that client, clients will also benefit from education as well as coaching. That being, you know, give us, give us more materials, let us know educate a psychoeducation about what is happening what what you know what i can expect the interventions to be easily adaptable so they can be shared among the communities community based intervention and focus on well-being and in that situation in the in our vietnam vietnamese case study chemsex as it is in many parts of the world is highly stigmatized so simple and very low threshold and very individual interventions uh, would be uh, would be uh, appreciated. So, what did we do? So we we in in collaboration with the community based into uh, um, organisations and the uh, and the service users themselves, we designed some counselling interventions. And as they asked for, we categorised them to make them more structured. 
the interventions were categorized into three session interventions, what you can do before the session, what they can do and what we can, how we can support, support people who participate in ChemSex during the session and what we can do to support them post session. Pre-session, during session and post session. Now, some examples of, of what the, how, how we train the outreach workers, how we train the CBOs to be able to deliver uh, these interventions, what types of interventions we were. This is an example of the intervention package. So um, HIV prevention still at the still at the heart of um, of the interventions, but also a lot more around uh, holistic health. Advising clients to eat a hearty and healthy meal before they um, before they they went to or, or went to a, a, a chem sex gathering to shave, to wax, to get plenty of rest, to, to know the location with which they were going and to make plans for their recovery. Preparing equipment and bringing their own equipment. So again, um, uh, to, to be able to, uh, to distribute uh, chemsex equipment packs. Or during the party, or during the chemsex gathering, an idea of eating, resting, drinking, and repeating. Advocating for a culture of care amongst uh, participants, looking after each other and how they could look after each other. Workshops with how they could look after each other. Workshops on how to keep sex toys uh, and fisting equipment, for example, clean. Workshops and giving and asking for consent. Encouraging participants to set alarms for redosage of chems or their antiretrovirals. And for the post uh, counseling interventions. Again, to eat, drink, rest, and repeat, to, 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 uh, to distribute vitamins, supplements. Find ways in which to be active. Talk to clients about how they could be active if, if, if they are, if, if on the Monday they report that they are tired or struggling. The examples being get to, 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 to get some fresh air, mild ex, uh, exercise. Psychoeducation about dopamine and the results of, of drug use on your, on your dopamine levels and how uh, dopamine restoration can work. Prepare preparation and eating of favorite foods and favorite activities. And allowing your social circle to know what you are doing. If you can, people letting one person know who you trust. Now, as I mentioned, these are just some examples that were delivered to um, service users, but it was important that um, delivering these counselling uh, interventions, the outreach workers from the CBOs, from the community-based interventions, were able to deliver these counselling interventions in a in a uh, in a good way, in a way in which they would be accepted, in a way that would that 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 increased engagement. What we realized in this is that as well as the intervention, it is also the communication skills are also fundamentally important. So there was a lot of work around asking permission to, to talk about sex and drug use, asking awareness, building questions, you know, what kind of issues do you encounter? How do they deal with these issues at the moment if they're encountering any issues and what works for them uh, during these issues? What works while dealing with these issues? 
what doesn't work and what might they better do? What might they do to deal with their, their issues? What would they like to do? Where would they want to be? How would they want to grow in that? And to supplement their own perfect solution or ask permission to give suggestions as well. At the end of the conversation, to check the commitment of that somebody might have to, to what they want to do and to do some checkbacks to, to, to summarize the conversation. Now, these, uh, the, these types of uh, holistic interventions, uh, right now we are uh, doing more focus group discussions so we can understand the impact of them. We, we really we started uh, rolling that out in 2022. And with 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 other issues that are, that arose the back end of chem COVID, for et cetera, et cetera. but we re would really like to know at the moment and really pushing for more focus group discussions and more engagement into the impact of those interventions. And I'm running out running out of time a little bit, but I want to tell you that um, mainline. We have a uh, we have a, uh, a harm reduction school. This this uh, is our learning platform, and we have chemsex trainings on this learning platform. And I'd like to invite everybody to scan uh, your QR code and to enroll in a module for free around chemsex. Um, and this will explain uh, more than I've done today about what chemsex is what we do and uh, interventions as well that have worked across uh, several regions around the world as well as in the Netherlands.